Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is an actor, a radio personality. You may know him from the world of cartoons. You might know him as the voice of Launchpad McQuack in, well, I'd say. There he is. I've got Coach, it. He's right there. there. He's, He's right there. Right over my shoulder. Never leaves okay. me. And also in, in DuckTales and, of course, Darkwing Duck. And also um, the DuckTales movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp, which, oh, yes, I have on DVD. I'm showing. Yeah, you, know. you can't see it, but I have a, I have the big uh, picture of that on my wall there. Oh, really? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, that was that was fun. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And so my guess Amber, is also. Amber, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Terry McGovern. My guest is my, my, Terry McGovern. My, my apologies for the, the ones that we almost did and then something happened with no, me. No, it's, it's it's completely okay. It's completely okay. But honestly, like your resume, I've literally got it on a note thing here. Of course, you've not just performed launch pack uh, for those stuff. You did Darkwing Duck, Raw Tunage. You also voiced Babyface Beagle in DuckTales, Jolene in Kissy Fur, Wild Rider in Jolene, Transformers. I forgot all about Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was bringing up some of your obscure roles here. And also Wild Rider in the original G1 Transformers cartoon, which is, this tape is actually really cool because you voiced Wild Rider in the episode Cosmic Rust, but then you voiced the character of Wind Charger in Masquerade as well. I, I don't I don't understand that. They, they and, and I also did another one called, uh, another character, oh my God, what was his name? Oblong? No. Uh... Onslaught. Huh? On, was it Onslaught? Onslaught, I it was... yeah, I did. I did Onslaught. Yeah, in Five oh, Faces wow. of Darkness, Part One, so the start Boy, of season you, three. You really know your stuff. I didn't know the names <laughs> of the episodes. Good I do you. my research. I do my homework. Yes, you do. You do. <laughs> and what else have you done, Terry? You voiced Derek in Greatest Adventure Stories from the Bible. You've also been in such shows. Such yeah, that was in Hanna Barbera. Yeah, yeah. With the late great Gordon Hunt, wonderful oh, man. Yeah, yeah. He's I've heard so much cool. about him. Yeah, Helen, and like, Helen Hunt's father. Yeah, yeah, and also I think I think Andrea Romano was an assistant sort of voice director to Gordon. She was uh, Gordon, yeah. Andrea, yeah. who would then go on to uh, direct uh, us uh, crazy people in uh, in Ducktales. She yeah. was absolutely just fantastic. And then we got another uh, another great director when when uh, uh, we, we went switched over to uh, to Darkwing Duck with in Ginny McSwain. Nothing yeah, but the best. those two directors, the best. Definitely. Yeah, I've heard so much about, you know, these voice directors and they're just so inspirational. Like you think these were the people who told the actors how to say a quote, a line, anything in a show, film, anything. Yeah. 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 And, and what was really exciting for me was that. I I got to help originate Launchpad. I mean, uh, when I got the part, I auditioned for the part, got it. Yeah. And then it wasn't just show up for the sessions. It was uh, uh, at least three or four times I went over to Disney and just sat with the animators and talked about how Launchpad might behave. Yeah. How, how his physical behavior might, and, and what he might do when certain things happened, you know. And and I got to be on in on the ground floor of that. And that is just, I mean, that, that that was probably the best part of the whole experience was, uh, uh, you know, helping to breathe life into this brand new uh, Disney character. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Are, considering... are you listening? Yeah, rebooters? and considering Disney No, I don't is... mean you are. I'm just hoping the rebooters oh. of You Know What are listening. Yeah, and considering like Disney turns 100 this year, like you've richly, you've, you've pretty much contributed to a big part of Disney history. Yeah, you, you don't always get a chance to do that. But uh, for all of us on the show, except for, well, Donald was uh, on Darkwing a little bit. Uh, and, and Tony was already doing that voice. and yeah. uh, But Alan Young as uh, Scrooge McDuck was, I mean, he was phenomenal. And with all due respect, David Tennant, one of my favorite actors, really, I, I think one of my top three Hamlet's. Have you ever seen David Tennant as Hamlet? It's extraordinary. But Alan's Scottish Burr is better than David's in the reboot. Yeah. I think. And David's from Scotland. 
but 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 uh, Alan had that that comedic timing, that sense of 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 where the jokes are, you know, where the gag yeah. is, as they say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what a cast! We, I mean, I we had a phenomenal cast. You, you've just uh, worked recently with, uh, or was it fairly recently with Frank Welker? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I want to get yeah. the dates right here. I, I make okay. Uh, yeah, Frank Welker, people. Peter Cullen, <laughs> Ruth, the late great Lucy uh, Lucy Taylor. Yeah. Uh, I, we had we had some cast. I'll tell you, I was very very honored. <laughs> Yeah, just all these people, you know, Chuck McCann, Hal Smith, Joan Gerber, Hamilton Camp, June Foray, Brian Cummings, Judy, June and Foray. freaking Susie Blue, Susan Blue, Sue Blue, who oh, I've also had the pleasure of meeting very recently, Corey Burton and Linda Gary and Tres McNeil, Alan Oppenheimer, Rob Paulson, who was just there, and Will Ryan, who I never got to meet, but I he he was a very he was a close pen pal of mine, and we had plans to meet if I ever came out. And I'm just very sad that we will. As they used to say day. a cast of thousands. Yeah, definitely. At least hundreds, hundreds of very, very talented people. Oh, and Howie Morris as well. And Howie, yes, Howie Morris. Yeah, the oh original, my God. Uh, the original Tigger. Was it? I didn't know that. Uh oh, I better Google while we're talking, but I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh no, that was Paul Winchell. <laughs> Uh, well, then he was the original Pooh. He was the original somebody in, in the Pooh series. I'm, try I'm trying to think. Uh, he was Howie in the Flintstones. He was in the Jetsons. Atamant. He was, uh, I don't know. I think Atamant was Don Messick. Yeah. <laughs> that's, me, that's me showing. Um, I'm trying to think. Wait, wait, no, hang you're, on. You're, you're very, Gopher. very odd. Gopher. He was Gopher. He was Gopher. Oh, was that who it was? Yeah. I know that I walked, uh, before I, I moved back from, uh, I moved back to Northern California from uh, L.A., uh, I walked on a picket line with uh, with Howie, and uh, really? boy, what a character! I'm telling you, <laughs> picket lines are pretty depressing, but uh, he actually made it fun. Uh, speaking of picket lines, they're gone. Hallelujah! Wow! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Goodness. Well, I'm I'm happy I'm happy for you guys. Like you know, I mean, you know, the writer strikes over. I don't know. Yeah, what's going on with the actors strike over there? I don't. I'm not sure if you'll be able to say much because obviously, you know, you're part of the union and stuff. Well, not everything is figured out. You know, not everything is uh, as ironed out as I understand it. Now, I would probably say something that, <laughs> that would be inaccurate. So, so I won't say anything. Yeah, but I'm by and large, okay. the, the strike has been settled. Yeah. Well, that is. That is really good to hear. That I'm, I'm happy great. that you guys have gotten an outcome. Yeah. But Terry, your resume isn't just, of course, DuckTales and Transformers and stuff. You have done the Jetsons, Fufa, the A-Team, Mork and Mindy. So this is going into your on-camera stuff. Charlie and Co, Mythbusters, Happy Days, Three's Company. You've done films like THX 1138, which was a George Lucas film. That was his first. His first ever film. And, and, and like... Apparently, you came up with the term Wookiee? A real quick story. I didn't even know this had happened until about five years after uh, Star Wars came out. Yeah. George was being interviewed in Rolling Stone. I'm sitting at home reading it with my coffee. And it's, it's, uh, they asked him, where did you get the name Wookiee? And he says, well, I had this voice actor, Terry McGovern. And I, hello? <laughs> And he went on to say that I was late for a meeting, uh, for, for a, a session, which I was, because it was a weekend. Uh, he was working this particular weekend, had us come in. Mm -hmm. But I was in the Army, and I had to be at a reserve meeting. Yes, our yeah. Army, the American Army. Wow. Army, our Army. And, I, and anyway, I came to, to it late, and I brought my friend with me. And we were both in our fatigue uniforms. And I, I guess I just wanted to verify that I was actually not at a costume party, but there were other people that had to dress up like me and go to this meeting. So I brought my buddy with me, whose name was and is Bill Wookie, W O O K E Y. Ooh. And I, I remember introducing him to George, and then we, I went to work. Years later, George said Terry McGovern came in with his friend and said something about he ran over his pet Wookie. That's what it said. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, you know, George has one of these uh, uh, magnetic minds. Everything sticks to it. 
And yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't think the particulars were exactly uh, as he remembered them, but he remembered my friend's name and gave it to one of the most fantastic uh, creatures ever created. No and, one's going with this yeah, the, the the two Wookie, the three Wookie boys. He, Bill had three sons. They had a rough time with it at school for a while. Mm -hmm. Then everybody realized the Wookie Chewbacca, big yeah. big deal, and so they wear that name with pride now. They're happy to be Wookies. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh, yeah. bless them. Wow. Uh, may I ask is uh, is Bill still around today? Bill is alive and well. Thank you is very he much. The OG Wookiee. He is still here. Oh my gosh. He is he is here and he's still my best friend. He I was lives gonna right say, how's the he road doing? Oh. up here in uh, Northern California. And uh yeah, we're we're still good pals. Oh, that's good to hear. Oh yeah. well, happy ending for all then. Yeah. No, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that he's doing okay. Let's have a look here. You've done films now. This this is like your resume literally just goes on because my note is just extremely long. You know, I um, don't have representation. Uh, uh, I, I'm looking for an agent. If you... <laughs> really? Oh my gosh! I thought you had like an agent or something. No, I have. I have an agent. I have a very nice agency up here in uh, uh, San Francisco, uh, the Stars Agency. Uh huh. Did I mention I had an ablation, a procedure on my nose? That's all I'm going to say. But it has left me very nasal. So I apologize for that. That's okay. That's okay. But no, but I, I'm with the Stars Agency in San Francisco, but I don't have any. I, I need some representation, representation down south, down in yeah. LA, especially yeah. with these re reboots coming along. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You've done the candidate, you've done Magnum Force, you've sort of seen your own of Star Wars, the incredible shrinking woman, Amazon women on the moon. Uh, you're in a deleted scene uh, from Back to the Future. Um, you've also done Mrs. Doubtfire, which is what I mainly remember you from. Um, Nine Months, uh, Jack, The Californians. Um, that's your, some of your films that you've done. Um, multiple characters in Lego Islands. So this is like the video game uh, section now. Uh, Admiral Akbar in Star Wars Trilogy Arcade and Star Wars X-Wing Alliance. Lenny the Liarbird in Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. I just did a, we, we just did an update of that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, last year, last year. Oh wow, that's so cool. Oh my God. I, didn't, I didn't even know. Like my brother literally had this, have, has this on PS2 and I was like, can I just borrow this for an interview? He's like, Okay, yeah, <laughs> like, it's an interesting character because uh, it's it's all most of the voices are Australian voices, but I auditioned for it, and uh, I just started doing uh, Joe Pesci from uh, from uh, what, what's what's the movie? Uh, Godfather? Huh? No, that he that he made with uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Oh man, you have to. Uh, yeah. Look how fast. Goodfellas, huh? No, uh, no, hang on. No, that, that's me. I said Goodfellas, but it's not Goodfellas. Lethal no, no, weapon. No, 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 lethal no, no. weapon uh, two. Uh, lethal weapon. Lethal weapon two. Lethal weapon. And he's like this, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Why did I think it was Goodfellas? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why did I think it was Goodfellas? <laughs> it's all about in the voice business. It's all about stealing. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, borrowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, just like you know, just like sort of taking inspiration, should I say? Yeah, definitely. And you've also done Professor Pack in Pac Man World Two, Launchpad in Ducktales. What was that last one? Uh, Professor Pack in Pac Man World Two. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say I just get all this stuff like Wikipedia and IMDb, and then I know some of it's you know sometimes false and stuff. And you've also done the Sam and Max video game uh, series, Jet Set Radio Future, Shadow of Memories, Batman Begins, Shinobi, The Wolf Among Us, The Godfather, and X Squad. So a few more video yeah, games. I was a busy little boy, wasn't I? <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. honestly, like I think it's really cool that you did like. Um, that I, I love that the DuckTales remaster. We've we've got to talk about that, of course, because we were talking about the DuckTales before. You, you wanted to talk about DuckTales what? Remastered the video game. Oh yes. Where they got the whole cast back. <laughs> yeah, that was the actually that was the last time the original cast got together. Uh I think Alan was still alive at that point. Alan Yeah, and alive. June was as well, Andrew. So yeah, I think and June was as well. June 13. Yeah. 
it was June Foray in, in the company of uh, uh, Stan Freeberg. He had his own company of actors. Uh, yeah. I mean, like Orson Welles had the Mercury Theater. Uh, Freeberg had this this stable of actors and uh, mm -hmm. Gene Leeds and uh, Paul Fries. Are you familiar with Paul Fries? Boris Badenov. Yeah, Pillsbury yes. Doughboy. Yeah. Yeah. And the original uh, sort of universal voice at Disneyland. Yeah. He did all Haunted of those. Haunted Mansion. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But uh, he he worked. Uh, uh, he was Freeberg's announcer on the United States of America, which was a musical. And if you've never heard Stan Freeberg presents the United States of America, a musical, on record. There's no video. It's just a photograph record. Mm -hmm. And it was it was born in those days when people had for decades now been listening to the radio and imagining what 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 they saw they didn't yeah. get they weren't supplied the visuals you had to do it with your brain this theater of the mind and that that's what freeberg was so fantastic at and uh june was one of his original uh one of his original players she lived to be a hundred yeah 199 yeah that's a really good uh you know that like, just and I used to talk to her on the phone. She lived over in the East Bay and I was in, on radio in San Francisco and I would call her and she would do voices just for giggles. June Foray would do voices on my show. She was she was stupendous. Fantastic. You never uh, work with Bill Scott, though, right? Just June, right? Bill Scott. Yeah. Bullwinkle. Dudley oh, do no, right. no, no, no. Bill, Bill that's funny because I knew a Bill Scott up here uh, uh, on radio, different guy. No, uh, yeah. uh, Bo Winkle. No one ever did. I never. Did. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, I know a lot of people who did work with June, but never worked with Bill. It's very rare that I meet someone who has worked with Bill, but never worked with June. So you know, quite... my, my favorite character, though my favorite voice on that show, was Hans Conry. Yeah, Snidely Whitbrush. Remember Hans Conry. No. Yeah. No, that was Fritz. That was a, di a different guy. But Hans Conry had that same kind of uh, German. A, a Bavarian sort of uh, vaudevillian voice. Yeah, it, it, that that was a a show that was way way ahead of its time, and before, after, before the union provided residuals. So not, those actors got no residuals. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that didn't happen until uh, mid or late sixties. The residuals came along, but. Uh, uh, that was a wonderful show. The Wayback Machine. Remember the Wayback Machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You remember all this stuff and you're only 12 years old. I, like, I'm autistic and Rock and Ball and Cool was one of my biggest obsessions when I was 14. So I had all the DVDs. I have plush toys of Rock and Ball and Cool somewhere in my wardrobe. Um, you're very lucky, you know. I mean, we're yeah. very lucky that we have such a knowledgeable, bright and... and uh, a talented and persistent young person. You're that's why you're going to do. You're already doing well. You're going to be a phenomenal interviewer. You're going to be very, very well known across all platforms. Yada yada, because of your uh, your interest, mm -hmm. and that that's that's a misused or or not fully appreciated word. But if you really want to be interesting and you really mm -hmm. want to get followers and people interested in you, you have to be interested in what you're doing and uh, boy yeah. you've got it amber you really have you you're you are well researched your age has nothing to do with it you got it all up here <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it's great to talk to you thank you terry that's really kind of you to say honestly it does mean a lot considering obviously that i i grew up with well I, not only when i was 14 i was like you know into rocky and because i was also into like all the disney afternoon shows so of course i was into ducktales and darkwing duck so obviously sure. you know like my teen self was listening to you now uh, like and then just still listening to all these shows later i was 14 then i'm 19 now so and i'm 20 in february so wait a minute, wait a minute. I, you're only 19 Yes. I mean, not that you. Well, I don't want to get in trouble here. <laughs> but I thought I thought maybe maybe mid twenties, but not, you're nineteen. Yes. I have things in my refrigerator older than you. <laughs> 
Oh, makes that... me feel any better. I'm 20 in February, so, you know. Well, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Life doesn't get much better. I mean, cartoons did practically save my life from a dark place, so. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? What, what, what will you be doing? Voiceover, probably. And if I'm right, I will not be surprised. <laughs> Didn't you just have your first voice job recently? Yeah, well, it was, I had my, I got my first job in 2019 when I was, again, I was only, fi I was only 15 when I first got my first voiceover job. It was for a, like a coin operated children's ride, you know, they put the money in and they move and stuff like that. So yeah. that product yeah. was made, I did the voice for it, it was exhibited in London at the start of 2020. And then during COVID, the company went bankrupt, so they only made two models. It was never mass produced. You know, I was the original voice of Teddy Ruxpin. Well, yeah. Here's the story, the long and the short of it. I I did the voice of Teddy Ruxpin, uh -huh. and did all the did all the uh, scripts, and then they said, "Well, Teddy sings," and they wrote these very elaborate ballads uh, for Teddy to sing, yeah. and I just couldn't cut it. Plain and simple, I could carry a tune. You know, from here to there, maybe. But if you're yeah. going to get tricky <laughs> and do all these uh, key changes and everything, I just wasn't up to it. So I uh, I, I excused myself. Yeah. And uh, boy, I'm, I'm going to really feel terrible, but I can't remember his last name. Will. Will. Ryan. Thank you so much. He was grubby. And then Phil Barron was Teddy Ruxpin. Who was? No, Phil Will, Barron. I, Oh, I, I thought I thought Will took over. Well, in any event. No, it was Phil Barron who took over as Teddy Ruxpin, and then Will voiced um, Grubby. He was Teddy Ruxpin's best friend. Darling, I'm not going to argue with you. You know yourself. <laughs> but I thought, okay. But in any event, of course, we, we lost Will a year or so ago. Wonderful. And I was absolutely heartbroken. Yeah, I was. Yeah. It just makes me miss him even more now because he yeah. was so kind I, to oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, he had many successes. He was a I know, yeah, extremely talented guy. Perfect. I know, and like out of all the people who I worked with on that documentary, who I had interviewed, um, and that's talking like out of all these big names like Tara Strong and Corey Burton and uh, Bill Farmer and Billy West and stuff, Will was the only person who I really kept in touch with. We would video chat on Zoom. Oh. We would keep in touch and email oh. all all the time. Like you know, he was interested in Wales, the country Wales. So I visited Wales. I got him some souvenirs, which unfortunately I never got to post to him because obviously he passed away. Um. Yeah, but yeah, he was so lovely. And of course, Katie Lee as well, who is, um, yeah, he, she's amazing as well. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I just, I just miss him. I, I just, I just can't really put into words how much it, it hurt. To I've, him. I've never met, I sound like Will Rogers. I never met a man I didn't like. I never met a voice person who wasn't wonderful. Yeah. That's kind of a, uh, one size fits all uh, statement, wonderful, but th th it's the appropriate word because uh, we're all just slightly crazy <laughs> and we are interested in what we get to do with our yeah. imagination. You know, yeah. we, we, we live in a kind of a different universe than other folks. And now you're one of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm a part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> and now I feel a bit ashamed to be wearing a set of Warner Brothers pajamas, considering your predominant I, work was for Disney. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just notice that. Just have you Warner Brothers, all these Looney Tunes, the Mel and Blanc. Think, and think of this. You know, we were talking about voice loyalty. Yeah. Mel did all of those voices. All of them. Yeah. I, I forgot there was, I, I think, 20 principal voices. Uh, Bugs and... and uh, Porky and all the, all those voices was done by one man, and it was until uh, after he passed away that uh, other people's. Oh, you had to get at least five people to take over from him because he was so talented. Yeah, 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 and that's why. Amazing. Now that you bring it up, uh, in this supposed or I guess likely uh, event of uh, Darkwing Duck being rebooted, 
I am hoping that they will go back and use the original actors as they did not do with DuckTales. We were about to talk about the reboot of Darkwing Duck. Yes, we were, because you were on uh, Tuned In with Jim Cummings and you were talking about the reboot of Darkwing Duck. And what I appreciate is there are some reboots that did get the original voice cast back, um, like Animaniacs reboot and stuff, but honestly, it wasn't that good in my opinion. And then you've got the new Tiny Toon Adventures reboot, which didn't even get any of the original cast back at all. What, 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 was, what was that? You know, Tiny Toon Adventures was rebooted recently as well. Oh, they didn't, I didn't know that. They, they didn't get the original cast back. They didn't get back Charlie Adler as Buster Bunny. They didn't bring back Tres McNeil as Babs Bunny. They didn't bring back Frank Welker as Go Go Dodo or Furball. Well, if I'm rejected then uh, in the reboot of Darkwing Duck, I will be among legendary company. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, like... I had no idea. I had no idea that it happened. And apparently, you know, and, and I, I don't know whose choice it was. I, I was mentioning this to you earlier. It mm -hmm. used to be that was part of Warner Brothers was locked up with with one guy, uh, uh, Mel Blanc. But Disney had a tradition of, as far as I know, never replacing an actor who, who became uh, the voice of a character, a, the well-known established voice of a character. That actor pretty much got to play that character forever. Yeah. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a new ball game now, because uh, the the reboots are actually leaving Disney. They're 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 not part of Disney uh, directly. They're not under the the roof of the uh, you know the dwarves holding up the up the building. Uh, they're produced elsewhere, and I I was not pleased at all uh, for obvious reasons with the reboot of Ducktales, but I also thought it was just it just wasn't as good as our show. I, I and and uh, everybody that came up to me at the cons, you know, the comic cons, would, that would be, uh, if, if there was any free unsolicited comments given me, it was, we don't like the new one. We like you guys. And uh, yeah, well. Now, Terry, I'm 19, as I said before, but like I'm, sort of in the presumed demographic of people. I mean, the DuckTales reboot started in 2017, so I would have been 13, a teenager, you know. Right. I would have been in the target demographic for that reboot. But the thing is, when I hit 14, I didn't like the reboot. I preferred the original DuckTales. E even though the reboot was sort of more or less for your generation. Yes. For your for your age. I yes. yes. Yeah, I, uh, I just, uh, I don't know, I... I... I mean, even David Tennant, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the great Scottish actor, a guy from Ohio named Alan Young was a better, had a better Scotch burr for, for a Scrooge McDuck because he had, he had that sense of timing that, that if you'll forgive me, the American sense of the joke, you know, and, and uh, it happens oftentimes when we leave our shores, when we go, to other countries to get I I the animation done, for example. Sometimes animation uh, projects go to the Orient, Korea, Japan, and they don't come back as as oftentimes the, the, the way it was hoped they would come back because the animation of the joke is different. You know what I mean? You yeah. have to understand the joke to animate it. Whether you whether you're doing the the cell drawings, the layout, or the voice, it 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 is really a, it, it's an American art form, by God. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You'll forgive me for being so, what is it, jingoistic? Could you repeat that word so I could just show it on the screen real quick? Jingoistic. Yeah, jingoistic. The word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. J a i n g o i s. It became popular during the Spanish American War. I, it was it was the term that was given to yellow journalism, sensational mm -hmm. journalism, yeah. and and people who were uh, or chauvinistic, you know, uh, and an over love of uh, of country, and uh, believing that uh, America wrong or right, America is, yeah, that's the way. Yeah. That's called jingoism. 
Definitely. And this is me just going to put a, a nice little PowerPoint sort of presentation animation of the word just appearing on the screen in rainbow oh, colors. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> Look what you Honestly. did. I'm honestly really excited, you know, because I think the editing process for me is quite fun sometimes. But sometimes it gets exhausting, but it's more exhausting when you put much more into it, like more pizzazz exactly. and everything. The yeah. launch pad is launch pad's very impressed with what you did there with your words, kid. Oh, thank you. You're gonna, you're gonna get a free ride in the thunderclap. Woo! <laughs> Actually, I gotta ask, where did you get that little that launch pad in the back? Where do you where'd you get him from? Uh I don't know which side. I don't know which side it is. It's like on your side, but ah. he is behind you. <laughs> that is a a a, a cutout, cardboard cutout. Um, when uh, I moved back uh, to Northern California, this is my home. And when we moved back here in uh, uh, the late eighties, uh, my wife and I and our two little children, uh, we put, sent out our first postcard, our our first Christmas card from our new location. But it was a picture of the four of us with launch pad looking over our shoulder. And I, and I just kept the cutout. And it, he's been with me for all these years. Oh, that's so cool. On, hanging on a wall. And I bring him in once in a while to uh, to uh, to hang with me. And there yeah. on the other side of the screen, the left upper left part of the screen is the poster uh -huh. from American Graffiti. Yeah, I can just about see it. It's like a whole like, you know, like a bunch of colors and stuff like that. Yeah, that was my first on-camera uh, part for uh, Mr. Lucas. Ooh, we used to call that's... him George. Hey, George. Now it's hey, George. <laughs> Mr. Lucas. Or sometimes, Your Majesty. <laughs> yes, there you go. And of course, I just find it just the sort of coincidence irony. I don't know the exact term, but the fact that Disney now owns Star Wars. And of course, DuckTales is Disney, and you worked on Star Wars, and no. full circle. Does the word incestuous, is that a little too strong? That's yeah. the second word of the day. That is the second word that will be displayed on the screen. Oh, yes, that, that's, uh, I, I'm a that's professor, <laughs> professor Wordsmith here to serve you. But yeah, I mean, everybody, uh, uh, everybody, uh, the big ones small, swallow the little ones. And that's, yeah. that's the way, uh, you know, uh, corporations operate and they've been doing that forever. Buy up the... But buy up the little guy. Disney was hardly a little guy, uh, but uh, uh, they they managed to uh, to envelop and uh, now continue to develop some great Star Wars uh, projects. I mean, they really have done well with the Star Wars universe. I think, thanks to J.J. Abrams in particular. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, amazing. Did you watch The Mandalorian? I've seen a little bit of the book of Boba Fett, though. I haven't watched The Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh, I, I had a great time in uh, Pensacola, I think in 2019, was my first uh, Comic-Con. I ended up uh, uh, going to the restaurant, the bar afterwards, uh, a sweaty day signing autographs. And uh, I sat down next to a guy whose name I can't remember, but he was a stuntman. Yeah. A, a German stuntman. And his name mm -hmm. is Fritz something. And we sat there and had a couple of... Uh, beers together and finally he he mentioned oh i'm baba fett i said what do you mean he said well i was the first baba fett the first time baba fett appears on screen uh yeah george went to him and said i'm gonna have you be this character give him the helmet the baba baba fett helmet and all that and so he was the first one on screen to appear yeah. as baba fett and did many many appearances uh as as same after that yeah 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 well yeah. Terry, I know I've only got five minutes left, so I'm more than happy to do a part two with you in the future. But before I end part one, I'd yes. like to ask you the big question, which I ask everybody at the end. And it's the one maybe it's a question people have been anticipating for, or maybe it's just something that's come out of the blue. But my big question to you, my final big question to you, Terry, is what has been your favorite moment at a convention? My favorite moment at, at a comic con? Yeah, a comic a comic convention. A comic, a comic con. convention. Comic, a comic con. <laughs> a well, comic con. One, <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> getting started in the cons was kind of funny because uh, Neri Lemus, who is uh, my agent at uh, CelebWorks, and just a phenomenal guy. Yeah, what a great young guy. And and uh, Chris 
uh, and, and all the guys there, the, uh, and, and the ladies as well. It's a great company. And uh, so in 19, 2019, I'm sitting here in my little office and phone rings. Hello. And uh, it was Neri Lemus. And he says, uh, my name is Neri Lemus. I'm an agent with a, uh, uh, an agency that represents uh, people at Comic-Cons. And I said, what a cons? He said, Comic-Cons. Do you know what they are? I said, I do not. And he said, you are Terry McGovern. I said, I am. He said, good, because we thought you were dead. <laughs> and that's how. <laughs> what? Well, that's what they, 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 nobody could find me. I had been, I had been out of L.A. for 20 plus years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people kind of forget where you are and who you are. Yeah. And yeah. He was able to track me down and, and got a hold of me and gave me a whole new career of uh, going out uh, three or four times a year. And uh, getting on an airplane and going to cities and meeting these fantastic fans. I had no idea th th that they existed. I didn't know people were still interested in Launchpad McQuack or, 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 or the series for that matter. But a whole generation, I should have realized, my kids grew up on them, uh, those shows, those Saturday morning shows. So literally, you know, a few million people out there eager to meet us and greet us and make us feel terrific and ask for our autographs. So yeah. all, all of those experiences have been, have been absolutely fantastic. Um, I think uh, as, as a little bit of a sentimentalist here, but I do remember one time, I think it was in Sacramento, Sac anime mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm signing things and I look up, and there's this very tall young man. Uh, and I'm used to tall young men. I have a son who's six six. So I'm used to looking up. And he he and there was just something I sensed that was disturbing him. And I could tell he was almost on the verge of tears. And I said, What, are, what what's the matter? He said, through tears, he said, I am just so grateful for you and 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 the other members of, of your cast because they saved my life. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, when I was a kid, I was kind of slow, always big, but a little on the slow side and got picked on and uh, ridiculed, humiliated by the other kids. Yeah. And I myself I, I went went to several schools uh, as a youngster. I, I, I went, through, we moved around a lot. And I went through that experience of having to, you know, reestablish yourself get on the right side of people and uh it's why i became a, a comic that's literally <laughs> you know keep them keep them laughing and, and this kid uh, didn't have that going for him he was just sort of a victim of uh, of uh, childhood abuse and he would run home this big lumbering kid would run home to his television set after school and just sit there and watch uh, DuckTales and and Darkwing Duck and and all the other wonderful shows that were uh, that were being produced in those days by Disney, and he said it was just it saved his life. It it, it kept him from uh, despair and depression, and it certainly gave a whole new perspective on on what we had done and what I was doing now by signing these autographs. It was it was pretty pretty good moment. Pretty good moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm glad to hear that, Terry. That was a beautiful story. You are an exceptionally okay. talented and multifaceted young woman. And I am so glad I finally got to work with you. And well, not that this was work, but to play with you and, and meet you yeah. on your wonderful show. Um, Definitely. I think you're terrific, Amber. Thank you, Terry. That really does mean a lot to me. Um, uh, Where can we find you on social media, may I ask? Have you got oh, a website? I, Any, anything you want to promote, maybe? Well, I, I, right now I'm I'm on Facebook. I know it's kind of funny that at this point, but uh, Terry McGovern on on Facebook, and I'm Terry McDuck on Instagram. And I got to start doing more Instagram. For one thing, you know, we talked about the reboot of Darkwing Duck, and how we're hoping we, being the original cast members, hope that we get recast in the reboot. So. Uh, a friend of mine said, well, then you got to make yourself present on Instagram and let let people know what's going on. And it, it could have a ripple effect and, yeah. and, and help you get rehired. So yeah. I'll be on Instagram. Yeah, definitely. Well, 
I'll link that in the description. And is there anything else you want? Have you got like a, maybe any books or maybe have you got a, what? Do you host any radio shows at the moment? Do I hope host any what? Radio shows. No, I don't. I, I am not doing any radio at all. I did a couple of years of uh, NPR up here at the local uh, NPR station, just sort of for uh, for giggles. But I'm not doing any radio at all. I am writing a book. I'm. Uh, you get to a certain age and I don't know what happens. It's a hormonal thing. <laughs> Some little uh, uh, time capsule goes off in your system and you say, I, I better write some of this down. And a lot of my friends are doing it as well. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making some headway. I'm about three quarters of a way through a book that I don't know if anyone's going to be interested in it. Uh, I know Neil Ross wrote a fantastic uh, self, uh, you know, an autobiography. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, he told me about it. I've linked it in my interviews with him. May the Voice Be With You was his yeah. title. What a great title and wonderful stories. And so for, for uh, it may be uh, our audience might be a small audience, but the people like yourself, the, the voice crowd, the people who are into animation, uh, I think will, I hope, find some uh, some humor and some entertainment in my book when it comes out. Yeah, definitely. I keep getting messages for people. Okay, there we go. Um, so, Terry, thank you again. Thank you again. And to you at home, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF, featuring the lovely Terry McGovern. Uh, next time, in part two, we will be covering uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, Transformers, and other cartoons and projects that Terry did that we did not get to talk about in this part. So do stick around for that. We'll see you then. Take care, there's guys. A, there's, a re there's a part two? Yes, we're going to do a part two in a, in a, in a month or two. It, it, that is, if, if you want to. Yeah. I should do I same wardrobe, different wardrobe, right? Up to you. Okay. Amber, thank you so much. You're wonderful. You're welcome, Terry. Thank you guys at home. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Um,